Hello and welcome to the video. This is a slightly longer setup video for this thing here. This is the Radio Master MT12 and it's running HTX 2.10.1. I did a video of how I've updated it. Now it's running HTX 2.10, I can do some of these more advanced things because I needed something called global variables. Now this one is for a Patreon of mine, a Patreon called Alberto. So Alberto, thank you for being incredibly patient with this. It's taken a long time to get 2.10 out and to get it onto this radio but we're ready to do your question. And his question was, can I set up kind of a cruise control? I want to be able to store the current throttle setting and then be able to adjust it with a couple of switches up and down like you do in a regular full-size vehicle. And then if I touch the brake, it cancels it. And the answer is, of course you can. This is Edge TX. You can do pretty much anything. However, before I just dive into the menus, I thought it might be useful with this one being a slightly more detailed one. Well, we're going to touch on quite a few of the more advanced features of the radio to let's have a think and just take a step back of what we actually need to make this work. First and foremost, we need a way to save the current throttle value. Whatever value is on that throttle channel, we need a way to store that in something that we can use then to use the throttle when it's in cruise mode. We also need a way to use that value that we've just saved as the throttle rather than the actual input from the trigger. So we need a way to do that. We also need a way to increase and decrease that value like you would do in a full size vehicle because that's what he's asking. And finally, we definitely need a way to detect when you no longer want that to happen. So when you've hit the brake. So there are a number of cool things that we can use in the radio. So let me just fill out this slide. So we're going to use something called global variables to store the throttle value. That's going to allow us to keep it somewhere safe and use it in the mixes. Then we're going to create an input that uses that global variable as the value. And that's essentially going to be our replacement throttle while we are running around. We're also going to set up these two switches here, these extra ones that I've added in the bottom. This is the module bay here at the bottom. We can have a four-way joystick, these two switches. We can even have a gyro these days, video on that as on the channel as well. And we can use these to both increase and decrease the stored value. So that fixes that. And finally, we need a way to detect when the brake has been used. So we need to use something called a logical switch that detects when we've used the brake and then use that to switch between the regular throttle and the cruise throttle that's that global variable. So now we've gone through some of the ideas, let's get into the weeds a little bit. So the first thing we'll do, let's talk about a way to save the current throttle value. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna zoom all the way across and we're gonna look at these special functions. It looks a bit busy here, but don't worry about it. So the first special function is called on. And what that's doing is that is just adjusting the global variable with the volume of the throttle. So that means that the global variable and the throttle are going to be exactly the same value all the time as I drive around. When I press SD, which is the second part, which is this switch down here, it's going to copy that value that's been tracking the throttle into G2. So global variable two is the one that's actually going to store the value. And then what I've set up is these two switches, FL1 and FL2, to adjust global variable two up and down five. And the way we do that is if we just highlight this and go across, if we press and hold enter and we can select increase or decrease, and that allows us then to actually set it. So let's just put that one and you, it's going to jump in increments of five. So all we're doing here is we are using a global variable and we don't necessarily need one of these steps, but I find it works slightly nicer. We're gonna basically save the global variable that's tracking the throttle into global variable two, and then we can adjust it. So let me show you how that works. I've just set up a telemetry screen. So global variable one is the one that as I pull the trigger, you can see the value changing. As I press the button at the bottom, this one here, you'll see that value jump to G2. So I'm pulling my throttle, it's about 73. If I press the button, bang, that is stored there. So that G2 is now storing the number. And if I flick these switches here at the bottom, I can both increase it by five at a time, and the other one, decrease it 
byte five at a time. So that's a big chunk of the logic done. We have a global variable now, G2, that we can use as the throttle. So how do we use that? Well, what we're going to do is going to create a new input out the way of the ones that we're normally using. I'm going to press and hold enter and say edit. I've called it C for cruise. The source is max. If we press and hold enter, you have all of these different options that you can choose from. And you've got this one called max. Max is a bit of a weird one because what Max and Min are basically saying to the radio is this input has nothing to do with any of the physical controls. It's not a trim, a switch is, it's not a potentiometer, it's just a value. And the value or weight is coming from G2. So that value that we just saw on the screen that's holding the throttle and being able to be adjusted by those switches are the ones that's actually going to be used for this throttle. Okay, so that's good news. So then how do we switch between the main throttle and the other one? Well, what we've set up here is added this extra line. So we have essentially two throttles running at the same time. A couple of things though I've done here. So let's just edit this. First of all is the input for this is coming from C. That's um, the input that we've just set up that's using G2 as the value, which is the one that's storing the throttle. The other thing that we're doing is we are setting the multiplex unusually to be the replace. So this is going to override and replace the other throttle control, which is the general one that's connected to the trigger here, when it is activated and it's activated by something called a logical switch. And that's the last part of how we're gonna set this up. So let's look at what logical switch two is and why we need it. So in logical switches, we can see that I've got two set up. Logical switch one is going to detect when A is less than X, where A is the throttle and X is minus five. So what that's going to do is detect when the throttle input goes below minus five. So if I push the brake, you can see logical switch one goes bold, which means it's on. So that means the radio can now detect when the brake has been pressed and the value of that channel goes below minus five. Remember the channels are minus 100 to plus 100 with zero being the middle channel position. So at the moment the throttle is in zero. As soon as I press the brake, it's going to turn on logical switch one. However, that's a transitory thing. We don't really want that. What we want to do is to be able to detect when this button has been pressed and then use the cruise until this brake has been pressed. So we have like an on and an off function. And that's what logical switch to actually does. Let me edit this and show you. So what I've done here, I've created something called a sticky. So this is going to turn on and be sticky. And what it's going to do is it's going to be sticky when SD1 is turned on, which is this little switch on the back that I'm using to enable cruise mode. And it's going to be sticky as long as logical switch one isn't on. So we have this little exclamation mark in logical switch one. So logical switch one, uh, the inverse of that, or when not logical switch one is turned on is what I'm saying here. So that sounds it's a little bit complicated this, but bear with me. So I'm detecting when the brake is pressed. So what this is saying is this logical switch two is going to be active and stay active so long as SD has been pressed, which is this button here, and I'm not braking. Okay, so that doesn't sound as bad. So what that means is, if I move down here, you see logical switch two is currently on. As soon as I brake, logical switch two comes off. If I press this button here, boop, then logical switch two is on. We're in cruise mode until I press the brake and then it's canceled. Now, because of that, that now means that I can switch between the cruise mode which is this button here, and I can also then cancel it by just pressing the brake. Now, obviously each of those buttons can be moved around and changed to whatever you want. So let's look at it in practice. Let's cancel out of all this. So here we are driving around. So I'm currently, the throttle is channel one. When I want to do the cruise and it's moving at the speed I want, I press the button at the back of the radio and bump, and now, 
Let me try that again. Bump, press it properly. Uh, and now the throttle isn't doing anything. It's actually locked that value. And I can increment it, make it go up. And I can also make it go down with those two switches. But if I want to get rid of it and I want to go back to normal, I can just touch the brake and then I'm back on a regular throttle. So this one has been a little bit more complicated. It's using lots of the additional special functions. There's always multiple ways to do everything on something like HTX. This is just the way that I've got it to work for Alberto. So again, thank you to Alberto for a really fantastic question. I'm guessing this is more useful for things that are moving relatively slowly. You just want to kind of set your speed and then concentrate on something else. But that's how I would do it using global variables and logical switches. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.